Shana region is Namibia's smallest but most densely populated region and one of three regions without a coastline or foreign border. The word Oshana means flood ponds in Oshiwambo and refers to the shallow lakes that form from rainy season runoffs as the summer floods in southern Angola drain towards Itosha. With its colorful cultures, important water drainage and wetlands, rich variety of tree species, abundant bird and wildlife, the Oshana region welcomes you. The Tumengeko Cultural Group was formed by women in the Okatana area who have a basket weaving project, thus allowing them to travel and participate in cultural festivals around the country. For women in the Okwanyama tribe, the ox tail is a sign of strength and wealth. They dance to signify the cultural role and lifestyle of a young responsible mother and sing about their ancestors, bountiful rains and good harvest. The Haiteta Nandadi Cultural Group was formed under a tree in Onjojo village to honor and remember their late king. With Kwanyama and Kwambi roots, the group infuses modern dance and drama into their traditional performance to turn culture into entertainment. This equal gender group creates employment for the youth and they dance about their people in daily happenings. The Nashikalo Cultural Group was formed as part of the Andimba Toivoya Toivo Secondary School's Oshindonga Language Program. The sticks symbolize weapons of the Ndonga people, used in defending their area against the German invasion at the Battle of Namtuni. During the full moon at the Oshanas, dancing takes place as games, but also becomes a way of finding a soulmate by expressing oneself to a potential lover. The iconic and colorful cooker shops next to the road become a good place to socialize with friendly locals for humor and conversation. The Nakambale Museum and Campsite offer an insight into the historic Ovambo culture. Here, you can trace the beginnings and development of what used to be called Ovamboland and can gain an insight into Finnish and Rhenish missionary work in Namibia. One of the Oshiwambo-speaking groups are the Kwambi. Their name means those who make pots, which is a testament to the long history of pottery in northern Namibia. The lower oxygen and temperature levels of the underground dugout, also known as Onzimboro, prevents the clay pots from cracking. The Ohanje Artists Cooperative still uses traditional methods to create clay pots and baskets. More than two and a half thousand women produce baskets and pots as members of the cooperative. The name Omaleshe means vibrant and lively 
and this cultural group encourages young people to be wise, take charge of their lives and lead. This unique group consists of people from different backgrounds and use dance as a form of common identity. They sing about life and current issues around them. The Ombura flat grasslands, with numerous saltwater pans, extend past Itosha to the north. The incredibly rich animal life that congregates in the Itosha pan is sustained by the flow of the Ekuma River. This river has its source at Lake Oponono in the Kuvale drainage basin. The saline desert landscape of dwarf savanna and several perennial grass species is common on the pan margins. These desert soils are rich in nutrients. When dry, most of the Oshanas are covered by grass. Various grass species provide natural pasture for livestock and add valuable nutrients to the soil. The largest body of water in the Kuvale Basin, Lake Oponono, is a natural lake and in Oshindonga means the one that swallowed up all the water. This wetlands of international importance, or Ramsar site, is made up of the Itosha Pan, Lake Oponono, and the Kufale Basin that supports about 45% of Namibia's human population. The communities here live on subsistence farming and fishing. Various comfortable accommodation options here will make your visit to the Oshana region an unforgettable experience. The iconic Makalani palm tree can grow up to 10 meters high. The Moringa tree can grow up to 8 meters tall and is found on rocky outcrops as well as on plains, like this magical Sprookis vote in Itosha National Park. Diverse tree species as neighbors are common in this region. The Mopani tree grows in soils with a high lime content and which are shallow and not well drained. The branches on the ringwood tree are used by Kwanyama farmers to ward off bad spirits and are placed over the entrance of one's kraal. The mustard bush grows well in saline soil and has medical properties. The African red-eyed bulbul male encourages the female by singing to her from a nearby bush while she builds the nest alone. The sociable weaver's nests are the largest built by any birds. They share with other bird species for safety and can house up to 100 families. Some nests can remain occupied for over 100 years. The Itosha Pan, Lake Oponono and Kuvale Basin Ramsar site, a wetland of international importance, is one of only two regular breeding sites in southern Africa for greater and lesser flamingos. Flamingos can live up to 40 years. Black-backed jackal uses its large mobile ears to detect prey. Jackals are mainly nocturnal and can maintain a slow trot of 16 km per hour for long periods of time. The 
Oryx has the ability to survive without drinking water for most of the year. Elephants, however, drink from 100 to 300 litres per day, depending on the temperature. A sociable animal, the male kudu, roam widely and form loose bachelor groups. Generally, they will only join female herds during mating season. Their habitat is anywhere with a constant supply of water. The ostrich is the fastest running bird on earth and can mimic a call resembling the roar of a lion. Lionesses do almost 90% of the pride's hunting. Male lions rest for around 20 hours a day. Great compassion is demonstrated when elephants take part in a joyous greeting ceremony upon the return of a friend. Hi guys, welcome to the Endless Horizons cooking show. This week we're in amazing Oshana region, which is very well known for its Lake Oponono. Also, Oshana is famously known for the Makalani tree, otherwise known to some people as a palm tree. We're going to be cooking a variation on a bean soup for you this time, and I want to show you what the ingredients are. We'll start off with the white beans, otherwise known as omakunde in this area. Secondly, we're going to be using omahangu, which is a local grain found within this part of the country, which I'm going to use to make a pita or a pancake to accompany my soup. Thirdly, we're going to be using um, some ghee, otherwise known as traditional cow butter, also found from the livestock within this area. Okay, so for the first steps, we're going to start with making the actual soup. So what you need is just some garlic, and you just want to give your garlic a semi-medium to fine kind of chopped. Next, you place some of the ghee into the pan. Pick up your garlic with your knife, put it in the pan. Now, I've pre-soaked these and actually just rubbed them against each other in some clean water in order for them to soften up. Once that's done, you throw your beans into the pan with the garlic. And now you grab your cayenne. And you want to add about 50 milliliters of water. And then lastly, we're just going to get our salt for seasoning. And this will take about 20 minutes to half an hour. For the pancake mix, so I'm just going to use about four tablespoons of the mahangu flour. You combine those with a little bit of just regular self-rising flour, about two teaspoons of that. Black pepper. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of cumin just to oomph the pancake a little. At this rate, you add some water. Now you have to be careful how much water you add because if you add too much, it'll make your dough really runny and it'll make your pancake stick. You give that a quick whisk and you just throw the pancake mixture right in the center. And that sizzle is exactly what I was looking for. And there you have it, some Oshingali soup with some Mahangu pancakes. Make the endless horizons of the Oshana region 
your next holiday destination.